Hey everybody, welcome to another tutorial. This time we're going to talk about uh, the Phoenix Info pages and getting the URLs to look pretty. So currently if uh, you go into the later versions of Phoenix and you go under Info Pages in the Administration tool, you'll see that you have your page manager. Um, each of these pages has an ID and a slug. Um, currently you have to load the page by the ID. So Basically, you'd have your URL info.php question mark pages underscore ID equals two will load the terms and conditions page. Uh, shipping page would be if we change this to a three, it changes to the shipping page. So that's functional, but it's just not as pretty as it could be. So my goal is to get it so that if we go shipping, that that page loads. Um, shipping being our slug. Once this is built, um, basically any slug of any of your pages will be able to be loaded that way. Uh, as long as they are unique and don't, um, you know, if you had a shipping directory, this wouldn't work. So you just have to make sure your slugs are unique and they don't actually exist in your website tree. So if we go back, um, we'll just go back here. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to create a hook. Now, the hook we're gonna create is, it's gotta be right at the highest possible level of the page. Um, so we're gonna create a hook that's actually going to be um, in the system part of the hooks, um, which is loaded really early. Um, I don't know. I'm sure there's other people that have coded system hooks. I haven't seen any, um, but I'm sure people have. Um, it took me a little bit to figure out how to get it that high in the uh, loading. Um, so again, if I o open the info page, which the info page, the info PHP page is what's going to handle our logic. So we're going to be dealing with info.php a little bit. Um, we're not going to alter the file, but we still need to understand how the file works. So the very beginning of the file goes into application top. And so looking at application top, I see that it you know, loads our configuration. It does the auto loader, which loads all of our uh, classes and functions. Um, it includes the database and then we connect to the database. And then immediately after that, we start with the system. So we are going to go in, let's exit out of that file. Normally I would say with the later versions of Phoenix, you want to put your hooks into the templates directory uh, for whatever template you're using. Um, that won't work for system hooks. I'm not sure if that's intentional. I think it might just be because the uh, hooks load so early for system hooks. So you have to actually put them in the uh, includes hooks directory. Uh, so we're going to create under the shop folder. So again, includes hooks shop. We're going to create a new folder called system. And then in here, we're going to create a new PHP file called info pages. We can call it whatever we want, but that's relevant to what we're doing. So now we're going to create a new class and we're going to call the class hook. Now, if, if uh, you haven't already watched my uh, Hook Basics um, video, you should probably go watch that. It kind of give you some insight into how this all comes together. But so we're going to create a hook called uh, or a class called Hook Shop System, and then we have to call it the same as our page here. So info pages, and then inside this class, we're going to create a method. Um, so if we say function. And we're going to listen to the start application. So again, if I go back to our info page um, and go into application top, I can see that there's a start application system hook right here. So that's basically what I'm calling. And that's where my logic is going to get loaded really early in the page load so that we can properly handle the redirection uh, that we need to to get the proper information loaded into the stack here. So um, 
So just to make sure that this is working, we're just going to do a var dump, which if you're not familiar, that just dumps a variable or uh, an array in this case out to the screen. And so we're gonna just dump the get variable. And by doing that, we can see that we get our pages ID equals three here. If we were to add some stuff in here, like test equals one and test two equals ABC, we get all those variables in that get. Um, when you're building uh, any sort of add-on or hook, it's always, uh, I think, very valuable to just throw stuff out to the screen to see what's available. Um, it can help you figure out what, what your options are pretty quick. So with this, we know that we can get the get variable, um, but if that get variable doesn't exist, it could throw an error. So what we're going to do is we are going to say if not empty get so that way that'll catch if there is a, if there is no get variables um, and not empty now I'll explain where this variable comes from in in a couple of minutes here but basically page is because uh, that doesn't exist yet. So we want to basically say our slug is going to be equal to the get pages variable. Now that again, that pages is something I created. It's something we will get to in a minute. Um, it doesn't exist by default. So then we're going to um, do a quick replace on this just to be careful. And we're going to replace anything. So regular expressions. Um, again, when I'm doing tutorials, I kind of touch on things. I don't go into depth, but I don't like just coding things, assuming everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. So regular expressions are just a way of, of doing a pattern uh, matching a search and replace versus just a exact match. So I'm basically saying anything that does not match a to z or capital a to z or zero to nine then i want to replace that with nothing and i'm going to trim the slug and so what this is going to do is basically once we deal with this variable coming in which again we'll get to in a minute um, as long as the get is existing and the pages variable is set, then the slug becomes the page is. And we're going to replace anything that's in that slug. So if somebody was actually going to try and pass into the URL logic that could potentially create problems with our database query or you know trying to hack in using SQL injection or anything, uh, we want to try and stop them from doing anything like that. So by replacing anything that doesn't match our regular expression here with nothing, we kind of sanitize the string coming in to make sure that it's as clean as it can be uh, for what we're trying to do. So now we need to load the page. So we're going to say page equals fetch db fetch array query we're going to do is using this function and we're going to select star from pages where slug is equal to and we're going to um, just punch in our slug here. So that will get us our page if it exists. So we want to say if not empty page, then do this. Otherwise, we're going to do that. And we are going to get page ID to equal 
our page pages ID. And really we could just trim this a bit. I could do that. Okay, and if the page is not found, and I'll explain all this in a second, so don't worry. I'm gonna redirect. To the index.php file. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is normally when you load an info page, it requires the page pages underscore ID variable to be set. And in this case, you know, to load shipping and returns, it needs pages ID to equal three. But we want to change all this logic so that we can say shipping and it'll load the page. The way that's going to work is basically we're going to pa we're going to pass in a page is using um, HT access, which again we'll show that in a second. Um, it will then clean that string to make sure that it's that it doesn't have anything in it that it doesn't need, and then it's going to check and load the pages ID from the pages database where the slug matches the slug that we're providing, which again is being passed in as shipping. And if it finds a result, it's going to set the page ID variable, which again is what it needs. Um, it needs that pages ID variable. This should actually be pages ID. Um, it needs that pages get variable to be set. And so we're gonna actually get it based on the slug that's being passed and set the page's ID as if it had been queried. Otherwise, if it finds that there is no page matching whatever's being searched for, then it's it's just going to return it to the index.php file. Um, or you could change that if you had a 404 page or some sort of logic you wanted to use uh, to handle the page not being found. So right now this won't currently work. If I, if I go um, and try it, it still doesn't do anything. So the reason for that is because our web server, when you type in shipping, is looking for, in this case, a shipping directory and there is none, therefore the web server is responding. So our code hasn't had a chance to run. Uh, the only way to fix that, if you're on Apache um, or HTTPD, uh, you know, any Apache variant is going to be able to do what we're about to do here. If you're running Nginx or something like that, uh, this tutorial won't cover that, um, but you might be able to figure out how to do it by watching. So there is a file in the root directory of your site, which is called HT Access. Um, currently, I don't have um, hidden files turned on, so I'm just going to open it at HT Access. It might just not be there. Let's just add it. All right, there wasn't one. So inside the uh, the HT access file, we are going to say if module uh, is mod rewrite. So what this means is basically if mod rewrite is turned on in Apache, then do what's uh, about to happen here. We're going to turn on rewrite engine. It's going to be on. Rewrite condition. Oops. We're going to say if the request coming in for shipping in, in our previous example. So if somebody types in shipping and it doesn't exist, and that does not equal a file, and it also doesn't match a directory. So again, if the module rewrite is turned on, turn on the rewriting engine, check a condition to see if the requested file name that's being asked for does not match a file and does not match a directory. 
if it matches those two rules, so if the file doesn't exist, normally it would throw a 404 error. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna change and write a rule. Uh, again, we're dealing with regular expressions here, so this means the beginning of the, of the file that's being asked for. As long as it matches A to Z, or A to Z, or zero to nine, so as long as your slugs don't have any other punctuation other than that, and it exists of at least one or more of those, then we're gonna redirect it to info.php, question mark, and this is where we set our pages variable that we were dealing with later that I told you I'd get to. We're gonna set that to dollar sign one, which is basically the matching result. It's the first match to our rewrite condition. So whatever is being requested here that doesn't have a file and does not have a directory, pass that as long as it matches this A to Z in upper or lower, oops, and zero to nine, as far as, so that it, that covers, again, A through Z, upper and lower, as well as zero, one, two, three, all the way to nine, and consists of at least one or more of those, then pass that match over to here. So if, if somebody typed in shipping as the address, so if we went back to here and they typed this in, then this would basically be shipping, okay? So whatever they type in, based on what I've done here, it's going to pass it over to the info.php file, pages equals whatever the slug is. Now we have to do an L here to match it, and that should do it. So if I save this and go back to our shipping and refresh, we're now at shipping and returns. Now if I was to go look at one of the other slugs, so conditions, I was to do slash condition, oops. It loads terms and conditions. So it will statically work for whatever you whatever you uh, build. So if I said add a new page and I said about us, about sort order whatever that doesn't matter for what we're doing here so then if I was to go in here and say about it's that easy so I will uh, make sure you subscribe to, to the channel uh, for sure I always forget to ask uh, to do that but it's uh, I plan on doing a lot of videos and it'd be great if I had um, a lot of people that were interested in what I'm working on um, there's lots of exciting things going on in Phoenix right now um, if you're not familiar, there's a new uh, Phoenix uh, place to go, which is phoenixcart.org. Uh, it's kind of the home for Phoenix. So if you go to the support forum here, the forums have kind of moved into uh, being located here and, and you're gonna see lots of great stuff coming up here in the next little while. Definitely look into going pro, supporting the community. Uh, lots of good stuff coming as a result of that. I will upload a uh, link to the YouTube video you're watching right now in the description that uh, will explain where you can go and download these files from my site at phoenixaddons.com. Uh, that'll let you uh, do this a little bit easier without having to type all that. You can just copy and paste it or, or download those files and upload them. Again, no core changes were made. Uh, all we did to do this was edit the HT access file and created a system hook. There's no editing to the core uh, to accomplish this. So that's always key in, in uh, trying to edit your Phoenix is you do not want to change the core files. I think that about wraps it up. So until next time, thanks for watching.